We're going to talk today about wet on wet and about multi-part stamping with watercolor and using a misty and stamping blocks. So we're going to hit a lot of topics. Um, so be patient with me because we've crammed a lot of, of information into this thing. And then for extrapolation, uh, visit us on the website and you'll see the videos a little slower and more extensive. So the star of the show today is really Color Burst. Um, we're going to work with the powdered version and the liquid version. This is the Moroccan set. Um, it was set number four. It's my favorite set and it's uh, on sale at a great price today. You'll never find it at a better price. So let's take a look and see what we're doing. We're going to start with our fall leaf background number 1243. We're going to use three of our color fuse stamps first, just to show you another set that we created, the 1227 watercolor background. And that lets us stamp down in these watercolor splotch patterns with just an ink pad. And it's really not watercolor, but it gives you a watercolor effect. For those of you that are looking for that without the mess and struggle of learning watercolor, this is a quick and easy way to do that. We've had this a couple of years now and we've taught classes with it, and it's been very successful. People have really enjoyed the backgrounds. Um, and because there's multiple sizes, and they can be cut up after that to other sizes if you want, um, you can use this in a lot of ways. <clears throat> so we're using a little bit of the orange um, the orange set and the red set and the green set, just some basic fall colors. It's that time of year. So we've kind of stayed with the fall motif in this, um, in this session. We're doing this on just a regular piece of standard cardstock, not watercolor paper. Um, you could do it on watercolor paper, but you'd really want to use watercolor for that to get the real effect of what the paper can give you. And we'll get to that. That's what we'll use from here on in. This is the last piece of cardstock we'll use. Now we'll take our background and we'll stamp over the top of that. Versifying Claire Nocturne, the black. Um, the Versifying Claire pads are fantastic, and we'll be using um, the Nocturne throughout the show today, uh, along with Morning Mist, which is their gray pad. And here's one that we, uh, we finished that one up, and we trimmed it off camera, and there we have it. Now we're going to do the same background, but we're going to use the watercolor. So I'm going to actually paint on this. I'm going to paint two or three of the leaves and then we'll show you one that we completed because nobody wants to sit and watch somebody paint forever. So you go sparingly with your color and your water. You want just enough to water to move this. We're going to, this is a dry technique. We're not painting, we're not dipping the paint into the wet surface. We're just painting onto a dry surface. And whatever shade comes out is what we get. And we can add color to that, as you're seeing. We can, my normal process is color, color, blend. And so we're doing a little bit of that, but you can also remove color. So here I'm going to take a drier brush where it's wet, and I'm going to remove some of the color to lighten it up so we get a contrast of shades going on. A little bit more red. So as long as you don't throw a lot of water at this, you're very gentle on your water, you can keep moving and it won't cause a blend and things will change as you add or subtract colors. So even if you're not immediately happy with something, don't give up on it. <clears throat> the green there was a little bit too much for me, so I pulled some of it off. And I'm going to simply move it down to another leaf. 
and we'll try another color combination down there. I'm going to add a little yellow. I'm trying to give the impression of these leaves in different modes of change from the green state um, to the oranges and browns of fall. And while you have five or six colors that you're working with, the combinations of those in watercolor creates a whole nother palette. So you get to play a lot with the colors. Here we're outlining with a darker red and it looks terrible, but let me blend it and things change. It's amazing what happens if you don't give up on it. It is so much easier once you get a feel for the paper and the water quantity um, to blend with watercolor than it is with Copics or um, dye markers or anything else. Uh, because the combination of the paper and the medium were made to go together. So this is what the finished card, and it's basically the same thing. We just took our time and went over it, and um, a lot of different colors. That's number 1243, Fall Leaf Background. So now we'll start with our flowers. <clears throat> Wildflower Joy, number 1015. This is one we were going to do in the class this year, but, you know, everything got canceled, so... Um, we have a lot of these, and we'd like to show you what we're going to do. And so I'm going to actually put two colors of watercolor onto the stamp. One will be an orange, they'll both be an orange base, one with a small amount of scarlet to go with it, and the next one with a larger amount of scarlet. And we'll stamp them next to each other, and it creates a real pretty effect. So we start with a dry stamp and some color burst, but we're not using much water here, just enough to take the color burst and, and liquefy it. I used the powder on this one as a base because I wanted it stronger. The powder is much stronger than the liquid is. So for the accent, I use the liquid. And just a couple sprays. If too much water, the water does not sink in on watercolor paper. So you don't want to use more than you need to get it to transfer. So we have an orange base with a, actually it's gamboge, uh, with a little bit of the scarlet. And now we're doing the same thing, but I'm going to use quite a bit more scarlet, and this is coming from the powdered side. A couple of sprays. You can see how that blended. The pressure of the stamp actually tends to spread the color. So I don't just stamp it and pick it back up. But it doesn't soak in. It has to dry on the surface. So we'll use the, the Versifying Claire Nocturne again. And I'm going to put something underneath this because my stamp's going to hang off the edge. And here's the card we did originally for the class. So now this is another one that we have uh, for the class this year, and it's number 1005. And this is different. We've stamped this one just with the outline to begin with. And I've dried it so that I can use um, water on it. It's the Claire, but then we're going to use the Fantastics. This is something created from the Sukun Echo people. It's a fibrous pin, um, and watch it soak up the, the liquid watercolor. It just soaks it up into that brush but it's not really a brush it's just fibers but it lets you paint with it and it's so easy to paint with this um, you can you know you can have a set of these you can have all the colors that you want in here and it has a little uh, self-sealing tip on it it won't drip it doesn't want to dry out and then you can reload it anytime you've you've emptied it so I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to use it to accent with a little scarlet. And then I have a third one that I'm going to just pick up some water and I'm going to use that as a blender. But it is so slightly filled, it's just a moisture. So it's really easy to control the water going onto your watercolor paper. Too much water, it just doesn't work. So gaining control of the water is my primary characteristic for 
starting to find out how this stuff really works. And there we have it. I'll show you the card that we made earlier um, this year that was part of the class. Oh, we're going to put a mask on it first. So we're going to use our um, 1231 random dots, random splatter, I guess is what it's called. And I wanted to see how dark it'll stamp there. So um, we'll, that'll be okay. We'll put a mask on here. It just makes it kind of interesting. I'll show you the card we made with it so you can understand why we were doing that. Just a little balance. So now here, so number, stamp number 712. This one was the first one we ever made. And it's a great stamp. Um, it's been around a long time, but it's a workhorse. We're going to put both colors on this one, on the Misty, but we're going to do it in two different I got a little tape stuck in my Misty. Well, we'll get that later. I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to stamp it twice because of the ability of the Misty to do that. So I can put one color on and then I can stamp into something that's wet. I can stamp into something that's dry. Both of those techniques will create something different. And I'm using the Fantastics here still to do this. So I picked up some of the Gamboge and we've got the other one filled with the Scarlet. And so this is all just Gamboge here. But I came back and added a little bit of darker or a larger quantity of Gambo so you can see a little bit of color variation. And now we're going to add the scarlet into the centers of each of the flowers. A little accent here and there will take, take off some of the dots on it. I don't know if you can really see the dots on the camera. So we're not in very close. is a little different to clean up on the Misty than it is on a stamping block. And now we'll lay the overlay on it. We'll again pull out our VersaFine Clear Nocturne pad. We'll stamp this in black. Very dramatic. It's an easy lineup. Um, it doesn't fit anything perfectly. And we'll show you the card that we had done originally for that one. Those three were from the class. So now this is another one that we're creating just for today. This is number 922. And I'm going to use conventional stamping blocks on this. So I get one shot at it. I'm going to put everything onto one stamp. And I'm aligning the stamps. And I'm making sure that the block edge is parallel with the paper. So they're common between them. So if I stamp one parallel with the paper now, I can stamp the other one parallel. And have a good chance of lining them up. So I'm going to use the gamboge from the powder because this is the base and I want a lot of oomph on this one. And then we'll come back and we're going to use a little bit more, a little highlight here and there. And finally a little bit of the scarlet from the powdered set. The powders were originally called Color Burst. The liquid was just called Liquid Watercolor. But I think they've adopted the Color Burst name on both pieces now. Color Burst Powder and Color Burst Liquid. You can see how rich and vibrant that is. So we're going to give it a little bit of dry. Because you don't want to be stamping over the wet. Even though the ink is supposed to be impervious to water, it's still moist. And it will bleed a little bit. But once it's dry, it's dry. Claire Nocturne again. Nocturne is their name for black. Uh, I'm trying to remember how this goes. Oh, the stems are in the way. There it goes, like that. I said we hadn't done this one for the class. It was pulled out. And we'll zoom in on that. You can see the richness of the color there. Now we have a couple fall trees. This was the original one, number 924. And I'm going to use the liquid watercolor for this one. 
And all of these things have been done on watercolor paper. So we're going to use a little bit of light green in here. Actually, I think it's a mixture of the green and the yellow to make a little chartreuse. And I'll put a little gamboge in these four quadrants. But it won't stay like that, so don't worry that it's going to look like an X on the tree. And then we'll dash in a little bit of scarlet. And we'll dash in just the last little bit of the original green. To highlight that. And we'll give this a few sprays. And in the lifting of the stamp, we get a suction and it moves everything around. And so you know that there was an X there, but if you didn't know that, you wouldn't be able to see it. So don't worry about how you put it on. We're going to dry this and then we have a second stamp is the tree branch outline that goes into this. We're going to use color fuse to do that. We're going to use our brown set. It's nice having the set, the color fuse sets now. They give me a lot of opportunity that I didn't have before without having my own sets. So you can see the soft tree. We're going to use the same color on a frame. That's a 1231 frame number th thinking of you. Actually, I'm sorry, 1069 is thinking of you. So this is the second tree. And this one's a little tricky because that second part, you see, I put it down square to the paper. That's not how it goes. So you want to use the package to get that lined up. Because if you don't, it will not line up. So use the package to align these two stamps. I did a quick uh, conditioning on them with a rubber eraser because um, they were brand new stamps. And so we're going to do the same thing here. We'll throw on a little bit of, of the chartreuse green. And a little bit of the gamboge. Touch in a little bit of scarlet. Back to our color fuse brown for this. See how the tree is angled and it's a perfect fit. We're going to use our standard frame for this one with the brown. That's number 89901. It's the original frame we did. Two double line with three dots broken up as we go around. And that's it. So to recap, um, this is our line of color fuse inks. Uh, we use three of them today. We use the brown and the orange and the green, and there's 12 shades with four colors in each one, and there's places in between as well. Um, color burst in powder, color burst in liquid. That's the Moroccan set, and they are on deep discount for you today. Number 1005, I'm sorry, 1015, Wildflowers, Joy. Uh, Field of Dreams, number 1005. Field of Poppies, number 712 called Flower Group, 922, beautiful flower. 924, our first fall tree. 1204, our second fall tree. Our original frame, number 89901. Our scatter background, number 1231. Thinking of you background frame, 1069. 1227 was our watercolor um, background set, and 1243 is the fall leaf background. I hope you've enjoyed this. <clears throat> Here's the VersaFine Claire Nocturne and the Morning Mist. And if you want to see more of these expanded, visit us at our website. Uh, it'll take you to YouTube. Thanks for watching.